Do we all Nettles. visually know what it is? Nettles. Nettles, right? Okay, do we know the Latin name? Erdica Dioica. Erdica Dioica, very good. Because um, I know I have some people who have done a few walks, so I'm going to try to make it a little more interactive. Um, just because you should be at this point, if you've gone on a few walks, you should be testing yourself, so feel free to chime in with things that I skip. Um, so this is Erdica Dioica, this is Stinging Nettle. Um, the way you're going to identify it for class, besides just, it's kind of your only... So it's your only serrated leaf that's kind of, it's this evenly serrated. Um, the leaves are going to be bigger as you see. They're actually, these are too big to harvest now, so leave them alone, don't eat them. Not because they're bad for you, but just because they've, they're starting to bind up all their beautiful uh, mineral goodness. Um, and they just get kind of chewy when they're too big. You want them when they're like about knee high. Um, but yeah, so they'll be pretty big. And the thing is, you'll see the stingers on them. You can actually see them. You're welcome to pass this around, but you will get stung. I'm being stung currently. <laughs> um, and the formic acid stingers are actually kind of handy. A lot of people use them as a counter irritant, often in like arthritis and stuff like that. Um, it depends on the person. Sometimes it makes it worse, but actually more often than not, it actually hurts at first and then the inflammation takes over and it starts to pull out a lot of the inflammation from the area. Um, I know a couple of people in Bass here who have arthritis and they constantly sting themselves. Um, it's also a decent counter irritant if you get a mosquito bite. People often ask about mosquito bites. Um, and that's just because it's going to burn more than the mosquito bite is going to itch, but it's not going <laughs> to fix the mosquito bite. Um, the primary medicinal uses that we use nettle for is actually really varied. There's a lot. If you use the seeds, um, they're really, really good as a male tonic. Um, they help with prostate, prostatitis and things like that. Um, very similar to how you'd use salt palmetto. Uh, the leaves are super nutritious, so I'm really going to tell you to go ahead and eat the hell out of them. You're going to take them and just blanch them really quick in hot water to disable the formic acid crystals and then go to town, but any sort of heating disables them. Uh, additionally, if you want to get the minerals out, just put it in cold water, like a bunch of the leaves. Often dry leaves work better just because when these have water in them, it's hard for they don't rehydrate because they're already hydrated. So if you dry them and do the cold water, it'll turn like this black green color and that's like vitamin, mineral, everything city. It's really good and it's really bioavailable. Um, you can drink it as a hot tea, but again, when you do hot tea, you get tannins. When you get tannins, you bind metals, the good metals that you want. Um, can you break it? I think you can. I mean, any way that you can eat this thing is a good way to eat this thing. Just that when you're taking it for medicinal purposes and you use hot water, the tannin content can kind of come out. But I mean, if you're just eating the whole plant, because remember, like, if you make a tea, you're straining it out. So whatever's in those leaves when you strain it out is going in the garbage, even if there's still medicinal value in there. Whereas when you eat it, you're just getting everybody. Like, you're getting the whole kit and caboodle. Um, it's been alleged that it has 100 times more nutrients or is more 100 times more nutrient dense than kale. Um, again, I haven't done the, my own personal research on it. Um, and the stem can be used to make twine and rope. That is actually really strong. Native Tuesday make fish net. Um, do we have any questions on nettle? Urtica dioica, serrated leaf. It's going to be a little bit bigger by the time you guys get tested. Um, a lot of uses, but predominantly pound and eat lots of it for its nutrient quality. It's like the big star of this plant, in my opinion. Um, it's just that it's a really fun one for, for patients. You get a pretty good um, compliance. With the nettle cold brew, like that I said, where you leave it overnight um, in cold water, that tastes really, it's fishy and metallic because there's so many minerals and stuff in it. And some people really, like I'm turned off by it. A little bit of peppermint often offsets that and you get much better compliance. But there, you will have patients who can't do that. That's just too gross for them. And then you, that's when I would definitely, I mean, I would do it anyway, but then you can really shift to like play with it, cook with it, work with it. Again, any questions on else? Okay, I'll just use it. You could. You could easily juice this. I would again though, if you're gonna juice it, I don't know about the formic acid crystals, so I would probably just rub them in my hands like this and you won't get stung. Except for that time when I got stung picking it. Um, is it applying at the same arthritis? Yeah, yeah, like on the joints. Alrighty. Next one on my our quiz, who's this? Cleavers. Cleavers. Good. Gallium cleavers. Um, so the common name is cleavers. 
The Latin name is Gallium Aparine, and it's your only world leaf. So it's the only one that looks like this. If you see this sitting on there, um, it is totally up to you to not screw that up because it's the only one that looks like that. So Gallium, as long as you have your vocab list in your head of like what plants you could it could possibly be and make a multiple choice, then it's Gallium and you're good to go. Um, gallium is a really good lymph mover. It's also, again, it falls into this kind of nutritive tonic aspect. Um, Matthew would suggest tincturing it in just brandy, which is about 45 to 50% alcohol. Fresh plant, doing that, uh, to get the, to kind of get the lymph moving properties of the plant. I really like gallium. I don't use it as much as I should. I, I just think that it's a, it's a little bit more of a gentler plant, but at the same token, that's really not totally true. Like just in my mind, I think it doesn't really move things along, but I just don't have a lot of medicinal use with it. But again, it's a hugely vascular plant, so you're thinking water, kidneys, excretion, detox. If you're eating it or what? You can eat it, but again, tincture works. You can juice it, but make a... Don't use your good juicer, because the, the fibers in this thing will bind up and wrap around the motor. Like, there's no saving it. They're incredibly strong. Even though I can do that. Um, it's fun for when you're in the forest because you can throw it at people and it usually sticks on them because um, you can just wear it. <laughs> it's a little uh, lovely situation. I don't know. Decoration. Um, do we have any questions on yes. gallium? About, you mentioned about gallium. Okay. Yes. So how would you prepare it? That would be the tincture. tincture. Use the tincture. You can use the whole plant too. Um, because it's going to cause a flushing, which is going to move water, which is going to thusly move lymph. Mm -hmm. um, but the, when you make a tincture, you make a concentrated version of certain constituents depending on what alcohol you use. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you can absolutely buy it. Uh, Heron Botanical sells a great one. It's called a Gallium Succus, mm -hmm. which is they've juiced it and then added just enough alcohol to be antimicrobial. you got a spider on your honey. Um, now you don't. Um, no. And Did that is like what a succus is. They basically juiced it for you, and then they added just enough alcohol so it's shelf stable. Mm -hmm. And that's a really great product. And I, I'm sure other people make it, but I really like the one by Heron Botanicals. Which, if you've met Dr. Yarnell, that's his company. So you're also supporting someone local and your teacher. Uh, additional questions. What's the Latin name for gallium? Gallium aparine. Gallium aparine. So yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people will adopt the get the Latin name as the common name. Which is fine, I do too. I call this gallium more than I call this cleavers. And that's good, because then you know it's Latin. But the common name, if you're asked, is cleavers, and the Latin name is gallium aparine. Okay? And there are other galliums that are less medicinal. So really, if you want the properties we just talked about, you want gallium aparine. Because there's also sweet woodruff, and there's a couple other ones that are galliums that are not the same. But you'll know it's a gallium because of why. It's got world leaves. Right? World around the stem leaves. Oh, I like my stage. So is the gallium a Lamiaceae? No, gallium. So it's so funny. Everyone asks me what family it's in. I was not taught. I don't know, and I haven't looked it up. Um, it's in a separate family. And I feel naughty for not ever like finishing that. But it's not Lamiaceae.